This morning I'd like to examine what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. In the gospel we heard this morning, uh, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He knows he faces certain arrest and death. A great crowd follows him. He wants to warn those who are thinking about becoming one of his disciples that they must first consider the cost. Jesus tells the crowd, no one who does not carry his cross and come after me can be my disciple. What do you think he means? How many times have we heard people suffering from a chronic illness or having to put up with overbearing people or immersed in difficult relationships or just having a horrible time say, well, that's my cross to bear. This is not what Jesus meant. Carrying a cross, as he meant it, is living in a new way as a consequence of our commitment to Jesus Christ. If we are committed to him, we must be prepared to leave our old life behind, to let go of those things that stand in the way of a total commitment to Jesus Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. This commitment to follow Jesus requires deliberate sacrifice, exposure to risk, losing one's image. This commitment is not just a way of life. It's that, but more than that, it's a commitment to a person. A disciple first seeks and follows Jesus and then begins to learn that new way, that new life. On my life's journey, I learned what that meant. I started working for the state of Florida in a job that took me into nursing homes and hospitals and many other types of healthcare facilities. Something happened to me when I came in contact with men and women and with children who were chronically ill, who couldn't make simple decisions, who didn't recognize their loved ones, who couldn't remember how to walk or to talk or to eat, who couldn't perform the simple everyday things that we do without thinking. I soon realized that my education, any successes in my life, my past experiences, anything useful I ever did in my life did not matter to them at all. These men and women and children were just happy I was there in their presence, paying attention to them as persons with value, persons whom God loves always. And this became for me one of the most important learning experiences of my life. These physically broken and weak and unpretentious men and women and children forced me to let go of my own self-image as one who can do things, prove things, build things, as one who must strive for and maintain a reputation of success. I had to reclaim myself and assess my life without the trappings of status and success. I had to seek and find that innocent, trusting child I believe is deep within us. Otherwise, how else could I nurture and grow God's gift of faith in me? On my journey, I had to learn that time takes everything away. I had to reset my priorities in life, willing to be vulnerable again like a child, open and trusting to receive and give love unquestioned to anyone, not counting their accomplishments, status, or position. This is the hard lesson I learned from being with those weakened by physical and mental illness. Many have experienced this unlearning, this letting go of much that has gone before in our lives, a turning to God and God's Son as a source and power of life. I have a friend, a dear friend. I met him 20 years ago at St. Mark's. He was my sponsor when I made my Crucio over 10 years ago. We and our wives met socially, and for 20 years, he and I met with 10 or 12 others at St. Mark's every Friday morning from 6.30 to 7.30 for Bible study and discussion. Gradually, fewer and fewer gathered. 6.30 in the morning is tough for some people. For five and six years, it was just he and I every Friday at 6.30 in the morning. So my friend and I knew each other pretty well. 
we shared many thoughts and ideas about life and God and death. Over those years, I recognized in my friend a driving ambition to be some sort of leader at St. Mark's, to influence the way we worship, to make it more perfect according to him, to demand more piety from others. I soon realized the way we worship as a congregation became more important than just worshiping God because of who God is for him. There is always that danger that the hope for immediate outcomes becomes the reason for it all. The important thing is to focus on faithfully doing what we must in the name of Christ with no expectation of outcomes. We leave that to God. My friend wanted to become a deacon. That didn't work out and left him very bitter. He blamed others for his failure in that. He couldn't accept that perhaps he was called by God to do something else. After a while, it was hard for me to see that bitterness in him, especially when I, his good friend, was ordained a deacon. We stuck it out, meeting every Friday morning, just the two of us, sharing our innermost thoughts. Over the recent years, I saw that bitterness in him fade away, like the last strains of a sad, sad song. He gradually began to let go of the old ambitions, accepting his small part in the life of the congregation. He let go of expecting immediate outcomes. He finally left that to God. I think his worship became more authentic, a greater part of his inner life with God. For me, that was the best time of our friendship. I saw him letting go of all the past stuff in his life that stood in the way of total commitment to Jesus Christ. I think he was finally at peace with himself. I could see that he had put on the mind of Christ as St. Paul described being committed to Jesus. In my friend's life journey, I think he grew in every way into Christ. He was transformed in Christ as a new creation. Everything old and past in him was let go. I believe Christ lived in him. Over the years, we struggled about what we really believed about Jesus and about God. We talked a lot about life after death. My friend passed from this life earlier this year. I believe it was a peaceful and holy passing. I regret I wasn't with him in his last days. He is still my friend, and I miss him. And I am a bit envious of him. He now knows God. All our questions and doubts we struggle with, he sees clearly now. He is with God. And for that, I rejoice. And my friends, pray by the cross of Christ that we take into our hearts, like my dear friend, the words we heard today from the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen.